Welcome, welcome to the Rick Epps Real Estate Show. You've seen the headlines today, inflation is raging. Came in way above expectations. We're gonna talk about that headline in just a quick moment here. Do me a favor, hit the like button while you're here. So here's what you're gonna to see today. Inflation is raging, Fed's gonna raise rates, here comes the crash, blah, blah, blah. Or you're gonna see, this is no big deal, Inflation's not as bad as you think. Things are going to change. So it's going to be all across the board. So let's take a look at the real numbers that we see today and we can all form our own conclusions because that's what I like to do on the show is just look at the actual real numbers. Now, first thing, what happens if interest rates rise in real estate? Well, I have a little bit of an example for you here and I lived through this. For example, the most recent period of extended inflation was between April 89 and May 91 prior to the first Gulf War. Rapidly rising oil prices and economic uncertainty led to a bout of higher inflation, according to a blog post from the White House. During that same period, interest rates were between 11.5 and 9.47. During the period between April 99 and May 91, the median sales price of houses sold remained about the same based on data from the Federal Reserve. Not entirely true. I lived in Southern California then. I paid $212 for my house. And I bought it in 1990, and I lived through that period. What happened to us then was there was a lot of defense contractor work going on, Northrop Grumman, you name it, in Southern California. And that funding and everything got squished, and everybody left, and there were massive layoffs. And I'm sitting there holding a house that we eventually sold for 153 before I moved to upstate New York for a job promotion. So I did get burned pretty, pretty bad. Uh, but you could just see that the layoffs were coming. It wasn't so much interest rate related, but I had no access to data back then. I couldn't see what to look at like you can look at now. So, and I should have seen when I was down there buying that inventory was at a high level and I shouldn't have offered them their asking price. So right now, what are we seeing? Here's a headline. CNBC inflation surges 7.5% on an annual basis, even more than expected and highest since 1982. Well, let's look at the de devil in the details. You go down to MBS here, and it says surprisingly swift reaction to a modestly higher CPI number, CPI. Wait, over here they said it was surging. Here they said it was modestly rising. How much? Came in 0 0.1 higher than expected. This much. They already had an expectation there. The bond market already said they saw that, that rates were going to go up, and it went up this much higher than they projected, but there was an impact and a huge impact. And you can see that the treasury markets reacted wildly. Look at that stock markets down here, treasury's way up here. They broke through another level. So what does this mean? Well, it means that as we spoke the other day, traders anticipate Fed moves, central bank moves. Now the central bank could probably raise rates tomorrow and this number won't even change. It's the bond market and treasuries that move mortgage rates based on what they think the central bank is going to do. Now, they've already baked it in the cake that they know there's one or two rate increases coming in March, and the rates reflected that. Remember, we were rocking and rolling about 3.87, and uh, even though all the national players like Realtor.com, Zillow, and everybody said, we will be at 3.85 by the end of the year. Well, eh, we're already there. So they've already baked that into the cake. What happened was, when they saw that inflation came above everybody's projection, the bond markets came back and said, this may make the central bank react sooner and maybe higher than what we anticipated. And now rates today are at 3.90. Almost, you know, knocking at four's door there. So not an alarming number, but it's up. And now remember, these are national averages. You can get, uh, you can see different numbers when you're talking to your lender. So um, what does that mean? Well, it means that the feds might raise rates instead of 25 basis points, maybe 50 basis points in March. So this is going to be a real volatile time. Now, I'm going to guess because I think I was talking about the unemployment numbers last month and saying that what we saw was I read an article that they did these seasonal adjustments that they layered in, very complicated process that they did. But what it did, it made job numbers explode. When in reality, they didn't really explode. But because they layered in these adjustments, both seasonal and COVID, it's going to make February and March numbers look really bad. So if those numbers come in really bad, the bond market is going to react again. Rates are going to go down. I think it's something to watch for. 
So the most important number to look for next month isn't so much inflation so much as it is the jobs report. Bad news is good for interest rates going down. Good news means interest rates go up. So we're going to watch for that. So what's the impact? Well, in Phoenix right now, in Maricopa County, right now, primary purchases, you and me, are down 15%, whereas purchases to rent a home are up 26%. That's huge. Here's another big number. People buying homes as second homes is up 25% in our market. So the retail buyer, you and me, we're going, I'm backing off. I can't find anything. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to sit this out and wait because I just can't find a home to purchase. The investors are out there like there's no tomorrow. And it's having a little bit of an effect, but not much. We're seeing this is average agent days on market. This is better than days on market that you see anywhere else. This is 30, 31 days, because that's how long it takes to close a loan. This is how many days on the market before they get an offer. And on average, it's eight. These big spikes here are just holidays. That's January 2nd, December 22nd. And you can see prices are rocking and rolling on the way up. Um, here's where listings are right here between of two, above 2 million. They're really in the toilet. 368. Here's total listings in our market starting to slightly come above 2020 levels. Um, and I'm seeing a little bit, bit of that here on my seven day moving average where the blue line is number of listings coming up and the red line is number of homes coming under contract. Look how close that red line is following the blue line. As listings improve, the red line's chasing it. It's investors and second home purchasers from what we just read. So there are there is a bunch of purchasing going on out there. And we have actually slid a little bit when it comes to our ranking in the fastest growing sales. Surprise in Glendale used to be number one and two, and now it's all Florida. Florida and Tennessee are really starting to grow. Big retail. Uh, this is a big uh, luxury apartment. It's going to break ground in Chandler, a Miami group. $116 million down by the Chandler Mall. Um, I don't know when it's going to be done, but there is, let's see, it's going to debut... Phoenix debut in 2020 with plans to develop 500 million in luxury apartments. So this one's going to be done next year sometime. And it's going to be right down by the Chandler Mall. Chandler Mall, if you haven't been there for a while, is pretty, in pretty tough shape. Nordstrom's closed. Sears closed. That's probably going to end up being something entirely different as we move forward. Um, but it shows you again that the money is coming in to buy rental properties because inflation is good for people that own rental properties. You can buy at a fixed rate. You can rent it out. You can keep raising your rent. You're going to see a lot of that, I'm afraid to say. Now, if you're out looking for a real estate agent, here's a site that you can look at here that's called azre.gov. You can go in and pull up their information. Here's me. And it gives you the public database here. So you can pull up. Anybody shows where they've hang their, had their license, shows the last class I took. But down here in the bottom, disciplinary actions. If you got a real estate agent that's kind of, you know, getting in trouble, um, it's going to show up down there. Now, there's a lot of ways that real estate agents can get in trouble. It's not so much during a transaction. The one that I see the most is just agents turning in agents because they don't think that they're uh, putting their brokerage name on their Facebook post like they should. And uh, it seems like a silly waste of time. But there are rules that if I put uh, a Facebook post up about a house, I better have the EXP logo prominently displayed and some people just sit behind the keyboards and turn agents in so the more and more you start looking up the agents more and more of that do you see so let's continue to watch these numbers and see what happens it's going to be fun watching the news today on how people react to this huge spike in inflation take care have a great day mm -hmm.